unsolved mysteries that will continue to haunt you. Most mysteries will have several different endings. Some good, some bad. But what about those stories that remain unanswered? Those that will inevitably continue to haunt you no matter what you do with your life. The ones that seem to change the way you view life. I had one such mystery, but it took me over a decade to figure out what had happened to a boy in my hometown and what I did didn't know. I know why some stories aren't solved, but I don't know why this one wasn't. In this undocumented video, we'll explore unsolved mysteries worldwide and share our thoughts on the mysterious tales that haunt us and how they could be resolved. It's a real-life tale. Only a few people know this. When it comes to my own life, it is the creepiest and scariest enigma that I have yet to find a solution for. In my hometown of La Crosse, Wisconsin, I was a freshman in high school. I was spending the night at Tom's house, where I was staying with a friend of mine. Our movie in his living room was interrupted by an unexpected call from him. I observed his attention as he listened intently to the person on the other end of the telephone. His face was filled with emotion as he tossed the phone across the room. He broke down and told me that a student at my school had taken his own life. All I knew about this young man at the time was from seeing him in the hallways. Despite my friend Tom and I not attending the same high school, Tom had known this lad in middle school. In those years, Tom apparently bullied him. Even still, I was astonished by it because he seemed like an all-around kind man. He felt terrible about what he'd done. The two of us decided to skulk out of the house and have a stroll. When this happened, it was around 1990, maybe in 1991. We were high school freshmen at the time. Sneaking out wasn't a new thing for me. It's something we've always done. Drugs, drinking, and partying were not a part of our lifestyle then. We enjoyed the feeling of independence that came with being able to roam the streets at night. The debates were usually enjoyable. When we were younger, we went for a walk through the large cemetery just a few blocks from my house. Even now, La Crosse is surrounded by train tracks that are still operational. The cemetery was a place where we felt at home. The frights. We were children at the time. As a matter of course, we stopped on the lines going to the cemetery as we made our way there. I still don't know why this happened to me. We had been to this cemetery many times before and on more spooky nights. Regardless of the cause, we were unwilling to enter. I'm not sure if the suicide of one of my classmates played a role in our decision-making process. Perhaps. Regardless, we paused, turned around, and headed down a nearby street without saying anything to each other. Now that I think about it, this walk had a strange vibe to it. Cars were nowhere to be found. Suburbia, in other words. Because there were no cars on the town's main thoroughfare, even walking down the street seemed strange. Odd. It was after midnight at this point. It was late on a Saturday night. What happened to everyone, if nothing else? It's an odd coincidence. It seemed as though there was something in the air. Tom and I both experienced it. That's why we brought it up. Tonight has been an odd one. The air is thick with it. It's all lit up now. In light of this, we walked down an empty street. Ending my street was a ditch with an easy to follow path leading to my own street. It's a cinch. Keep in mind that we were in the suburbs when I got to this story's harrowing part. In these homes, no ghosts or ghouls were lurking in the shadows. There were also many trees, but there were quite a few. However, it wasn't a completely new development either. Because we're walking, Tom and I stare at the ground beneath our feet as we converse. At the moment, I have no recollection of the specific exchange. We may have been discussing the tragic events of that night. However, it might just as easily have been about Akira or Star Wars. Tom and I suddenly came to a halt as we approached the end of the street which was just a few homes away. Without saying a word to each other, we completed the task simultaneously. Both of our gazes swung toward each other as if we were detecting something. It was as if the hair on our arms and the backs of our necks were standing on end. Then we all followed one another's lead and slowly shifted our sights slightly to the right. 
the moment we saw it. Two homes away, in a nearly deserted front yard of a suburban home, dark figures appeared. Someone or something dressed in dark robes approached. I found the finest approximation of what we observed by searching for a photograph on Google. There's no way to see what's going on. There are no options. Only the row. This person, Bo, made no attempt to recognize our presence. For the time being, no. A different kind of movement was also observed. I'm unable to express myself clearly. As though it were slowly wandering around in circles, yet it wasn't. It included something moving with the breeze. As for the wind, it did pick up a bit. In addition, the light that illuminated it a little was an unexpected feature. As it stood, this figure could only be seen in the dim light of a nearby streetlight. Tom and I were unable to move. As I write this, I'm nearly paralyzed. I haven't thought about what happened that night in a long time. Hence, we remained paralyzed in horror, watching this dark figure moving but not moving in the middle of the street. And it had something in it. On the other hand, its robe might have been blowing in the breeze. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. When I don't know how long we stared at this thing, it suddenly stopped and looked up at us, as though scared by our presence. We were satisfied with that. We tried to flee as quickly as possible. We took a shortcut along a side street to get to my neighborhood. This road led to a small incline in elevation. As we came around the bend and began running up the slope in fear, it was time to call it a day because we observed another dark figure with its arms raised on top of that hill. At this point, Tom's house was at least five miles away, so we took a U-turn and fled. We took off running. The passage of time slowed to a halt. The next thing I know, we're gasping for air in a strange courtyard in a different part of town that neither of us had ever been before. We sat up and walked back to his house quiet without saying a word. The air returned to its usual state. However, it was as if we were in some type of fog, even though he is no longer in danger. In his home, we both passed out. When I awoke that morning, I returned to my employment place. I took my bike to the location a few days later. The shadows may have been playing tricks on us. Maybe something like a for sale sign or a certain tree or bush gave the impression that there was something else there. Nothing. It was a wide open space. Here's a look at the location on Google Earth. It is clear from the white arrows that there have been several encounters with the black beings. Also visible are the train tracks and a large cemetery on the left. After that night, Tom and I didn't talk about it for quite some time. When I brought it up years later, he said, yes, that's correct. I don't know what that was. As though nothing had happened in the intervening years. Inquiring minds want to know, on a loss. None of us had ever tried a drug. We hadn't had any alcoholic beverages. I frequently wondered if it was a haunting specter, ghost, or something like that. The possibility of alien abduction or sighting exists. We didn't see anything, but there was a mysterious light. Another possibility is that other children were teasing us. Were they somehow aware of our impending arrival? How did they manage to be so well prepared? The truth is, I'm not sure. Approximately 24 years ago, to be exact. It is, in fact, an actual story. A few months ago, my dearest friend Tom unexpectedly went away after a heart attack. During his funeral, I remember this night. I'd like to go back to that place. Like my friend, I was struck by the strange coincidence of an untimely death. If so, what does it mean? Were we foretelling a tragic end for one of us, which unfortunately befell my best friend Tom? In my mind, there is no possibility this was a double hallucination. It's a constant source of anxiety for me. The mere existence of unsolved mysteries is truly riveting, and there are countless tales of murderers, kidnappings, serial killers, and mysterious disappearances that have remained unresolved for decades. For some people, these stories are captivating while others find it narratively boring. We all have our preferences on which mysteries we enjoy the most. However, each tale is captivating due to its mysterious nature, and we should be thankful for the stories that capture our attention. If you are also a big fan of mystery genre, 
then don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel Case Close to make sure you stay updated on some of the hottest mysteries out there. See you in the next video. Until then, we bid adieu.